been 20 years since the worst ter terrorist attack on U.S. soil, and, and a look at some of the things going on at RHS this week. It's Friday, and we are... I'm Noah Foster, and we begin today with a look back to 20 years ago and the worst terrorist attack ever to happen in the United States, 9-11. While well, RHS students hadn't even been born yet, our, our faculty and staff members remember that terrible day. I remember that morning, um, I was laying in bed, and one of my roommates came in and said something like, they hit us, or they got us, or, and I didn't know what he was talking about, and so I immediately got up and turned on the television, and that was shortly before the second tower was hit. And so classes were canceled that day on the Bloomington campus, and I remember a bunch of us uh, gathered at a friend of mine's apartment, and the one thing I really remember, other than being concerned about friends we had who uh, were working in that area and people we knew uh, couldn't get through, the phone lines were completely down. Um, a f one friend of ours' mother was, you know, in hysterics because he worked across the street from the World Trade Center. But I, the thing I kind of remember the most was a feeling of uh, we wanted to do something. We felt like we wanted to do something. We didn't know what, but we felt compelled to do something. And I think that's the same feeling that led some people to join the military and uh, led other people, unfortunately, to, uh, to target anyone who might have been of Middle Eastern origin which was very unfortunate. We saw some of that on the campus down there. So I was in my student teaching experience on September 11th when the, when the uh, towers fell. And I remember getting to work that morning and one of my other student teachers that was working in the same building was like, did you hear what happened? And we thought it was an accident at first. And then, whew, still gives me shivers today. She came in and she said, another, to another plane hit the other tower. And it was so bizarre because all day parents were just pulling their kids from school. Nobody knew what to think. Um, and then during lunch that day, we sat and we watched the news. Um, and then on the way home, gas prices rocketed. It was just, that's when it hit me that it was really serious. Um, it was sort of surreal up until that point. But it was um, scary because we live in a country that's supposed to be one of the mightiest powers in the world and we were attacked on our own home soil. Um, I was upstairs on the third floor and uh, I was on prep period and um, I just happened to, at that time we had cable TV in our classroom so I was listening to the news, grading some papers and uh, they uh, it came on that a plane had hit the World Trade Center, the, the first building. And uh, so as I was watching and, and listening, then uh, I actually saw the second one come in and, and uh, hit the other tower. I uh, went and told all the teachers up on the third floor, and uh, we're all social studies teachers, so we all switched on the TV. And that's pretty much all we did all day was just watch the news and, and the horrific events uh, that were going on. Um, it's really weird. After school, I went to football practice, and uh, we're so used to seeing uh, airplanes flying in and out of Dayton. That day, there was absolutely no planes. It was just quiet and eerie, so it was, it was kind of weird. And we had the television on because we usually had the TV on for the Weather Channel. And my secretary shouted at me and said, Oh my gosh, you have got to come here. So what we saw, we were watching uh, CNN. Uh, we saw the plane fly into the first tower. Uh, we were watching. We then saw the first tower collapse. Um, um, word quickly uh, got around the school as the second tower went down, and all events were canceled. Um, as some of you may know, uh, all uh, air flights all over the country were grounded. There were no planes in the air. And we actually all left school early. As I said, everything was canceled. It was one of the saddest and scariest uh, moments that I've ever experienced. If you ever doubt the importance of 9-11, you only have to look 
at a recent USA Today poll that shows Americans see it as one of the most significant impacts to the United States over the last 20 years next to the coronavirus pandemic. And over 60% of those polled feel that changed America forever. Those of us that were old enough and had kids during that time, like we really uh, felt that impact of remembering that family is super important and that we need to pull together to do what's right for our country. Remember that we, we in some ways, we're ending 20 years of war, you know? And it, it was a different kind of war. We, it wasn't like Vietnam where people were getting drafted. And so a lot of us didn't feel that impact directly, not, at least not as significantly. Um, but we certainly had a lot of families affected through, through the chaos, the strife of war. I mean, I had friends who came back with PTSD um, which then ripples out to everybody else, mm -hmm. right? If one person has PTSD, it affects the people around them. Travel changed, right? Yeah. Uh, you could no longer go and see somebody at the gate at the airport. Um, you, you had to take your shoes off, all those things, <laughs> yeah. you know, minor things. Really sort of set off the use of social media to spread misinformation that we see even today, especially during our elections and things of that nature. Um, not just that, but a lot of conspiracy theories that were that sprouted up out of 9-11 and now ever since then you see the same kinds of things happening where people are doubting school shootings you see people doubting any you know September or excuse me January 6th last year when when people stormed the Capitol building how people doubted that that was really that they talk about crisis actors and things of those nature and a lot of that sprung up because 9-11 so yeah it definitely has changed our country um, one of the things that I do remember afterwards was the patriotism uh, that was just all over our country. Um, people stopped and stood for the American flag, and any time the national anthem was played, it was, it was such a sad time, such a tragic time in our country, uh, but again, it brought us all together as Americans uh, believing in the freedoms and everything that we enjoy and need to remember in this country. Um, I hope that all of us uh, will remember that day, and especially all the first responders who uh, and the heroes um, in not only New York City, uh, but also uh, on the airplane uh, that crashed in Pennsylvania, uh, where actually the passengers uh, went into the cabin to stop uh, the terrorist from flying this plane into what we thought was going to be uh, Washington, D.C. So again, I urge you all to remember the heroism of, of those who lost their lives at 9-11, and, and to also remember, we hope we never have to repeat this again. It's time to look at some of the exciting things happening in your classes here at RHS.
Now let's take a look at a few announcements. Our shop's grocery requests can now be made on Canvas. Select the RHS announcements and find the R shop's announcement to fill out the form. Groceries will be delivered in bags labeled with student ID numbers on Wednesdays in R134, the old counseling office of Hoover and Price. Next week is Spear Week with the homecoming football game next Friday night. Here are the themes for each day of Spear Week. Monday is Tie-Dye Day. Tuesday is Twin Day. Wednesday is Cartoon slash Movie Year Today. Thursday is Jersey Day. And Friday is We Are Rich in Red, Red and White Day. Remember, next Friday is the end of the first six-week grain period. Now is the time to get missing work turned in, especially if you've been out for quarantine and have, have makeup work. Talk to your teachers and make sure to be on track for your first report card of the year. Now let's get a quick check for RHS Sports with Owen Matthews. Girls soccer celebrates senior night with a win. Boys soccer gets rescheduled and the, bowling, the boys bowling team is set. But let's start with Lady Red Devil Golf that earned a win over New Palestine earlier this week. The golfers were led by medalist Esther Etherington who shot a 42 for the nine hole match. Junior Zoe Brock wasn't far behind with a 44. The ladies are off this weekend before competing in the NCC tournament on Monday. Congratulations to girls soccer for a win on senior night earlier this week. RHS was hot and shut out the Bearcats 4 to nothing behind the goals from Kayla Lakes. Bree Hillard, Claire Rising, and Peyton Morgan. The girls traveled to Marion on Sun Saturday for another NCC showdown. While the girls were winning, the boys had their match with Muncie rescheduled until next week. The boys will travel to Muncie next Wednesday to make up their game starting at 5 p.m. The boys bowling team is set and there's a meeting for all team members next Tuesday. September 14th at 40 lanes at 4 p.m. You must have a parent or guardian with you at the meeting. Good luck to cross country this weekend as the participant in Randolph Southern Invitational on the Saturday and good luck to the girls golf and NCC tournament on Monday. That's sports, now back to you Noah. That's our show, you're on the air, I'm Noah Foster. Have a great weekend and God bless America.